It's said everyone has a story. China has almost 1.4 billion of them, from the mega cities to the vast countryside, from the ancient to the ultra modern. It's our job to bring these stories to you, direct from one of the most rapidly changing nations on the planet. I'm Joey Catanzaro, and we are rediscovering China. The most populous nation on the planet has the baby blues. Tens of millions of Chinese are now estimated to be infertile. So how is China, a relatively new adopter of IVF technology, coping with this problem? This week we find out. In the 1990s, they just said, "This is a test tube baby. I don't want to test the tube baby." But up to now, more than 400 IVF centers in China. This is Chongqing in China's west, home to roughly 30 million people. Despite the staggering number of residents here, some local couples dream of increasing the population by one. This is where their hopes are delivered or dashed. There's something incredible happening in this room. The woman behind me is one of the tens of millions of Chinese people. Estimated to suffer from fertility problems, as a result of what you're seeing right now, there's about a 70% chance she's about to fall pregnant. This is the front line of a growing IVF industry in a nation where the family business is booming. China is about to become the world's biggest IVF market, according to industry insiders. Some believe it already is. The IVF arm of Chongqing Public Hospital now treats about 10,000 patients every year, and this represents just a small fraction of the soaring demand across the nation. The World Health Organization says infertility will be the third most serious disease worldwide in the 21st century, beaten only by cancer. And heart disease. Here, in the most populous nation on the planet, there's now an estimated 40 to 50 million Chinese suffering from infertility. China delivered its first IVF baby in the mid 1980s, roughly a decade behind the West. But demand has given birth to an industry that's growing up fast. This is Yubi Jun. In 1999, her and her husband came here to Chongqing Hospital for IVF treatment. They'd already tried IVF unsuccessfully three times in their home province Guangdong. This was their last shot at having a baby. You must be feeling、uh, a bit nostalgic. What are you What are you thinking and feeling right now? Yeah, I'm feeling because we've been quite close for ten years. We just quite close. And 17 years ago, she gave birth to a beautiful baby boy here in Chongqing. Bi Jun is retracing her footsteps to meet the woman who made her dream a reality. Bi Jun, hi. Oh, how are you? Hi, Jun. Hello, how are you? 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 <laughs> Guo Xian was among the first 100 IVF babies born in Western China. He's now 17 and studying in Canada. Both he and the IVF industry here have done some serious growing up. What happened after the, the fertilized egg was implanted? 一直的卧床，都没有出门出门口，都没有，除了要要检查，去医院检查那些，什么什么地方都不去，就都不都不工作了。只是我现在知道我的任务就是要生生小孩。It was mission accomplished for everyone. Does it make your job feel very worthwhile hearing stories like this? 
about yeah. Uh, yeah? Yeah, I'm so happy because I, my job is to make baby, make the family is happy. Chinese couples now pay about 6,000 US dollars per IVF treatment cycle. It's a price barrier for some, but there's no shortage of customers. Chongqing Hospital's IVF clinic makes more money than any other department. Yubi Jun says it was money well spent. What were you thinking and feeling when you finally got to hold your baby boy for the first time? <laughs> We go to the streets of Chongqing to find out what others think of IVF. IVF in China may be more strange than in America or in Europe, back the cultural background. Internationally, infertility is diagnosed when a couple are unable to fall pregnant naturally after a year of trying. IVF, a possible solution, sees the harvested eggs and sperm combined in a lab and the fertilized egg placed in the uterus to grow. So-called test tube babies haven't always been accepted in China. It seems as if many people in China are embarrassed to talk about IVF or at least embarrassed to admit they're undergoing IVF treatment. Why is that? Is it, is it a cultural thing? Yes. I, I think in the past, uh, such as in the 1990s, most of Chinese people didn't know what is IVF. They don't know. They just say, this is a test tube baby. I don't want to test a tube baby. But up to now, most of, most of people know the IVF. IVF is just a technique, technique knowledge for infertility couples to help them to got the pregnancy. Now, more than 400 IVF centers in China. But as some commentators say, even 400 IVF centers isn't enough. Chongqing has a population of about 30 million people. That's roughly three times the entire population of a small country like Belgium. And this is just one region of the most populous nation on the planet. By some estimates, 10 to 15 percent of China's population suffer from fertility problems. But just how accurate are these estimates? And how many of these people actually need or want IVF treatment? At a new facility built to help with the overflow of IVF patients is a man who believes he has the answers. Dr. Huang Guoning says there's no truth to reports of long waiting times for treatment. Is there any way of estimating what the infertility rate might be here in Chongqing and across the rest of China? Chi 经济最发达的地方,就是呈现结合部经济非常活跃的这个地方,的不孕症的发生率是偏高的,大约超过百分之八以上。所以我们平均的来看的话,重庆市的不孕症的发生率在百分之八点六左右。Applying for IVF in China is regulated by the government. It's only available to married couples, and the vast majority of procedures are carried out in the public health system. We're talking about tens of millions of people, maybe 40 million, maybe 50 million people who are potentially uh, facing fertility problems in China. Does the public health system have the ability to cope with the demand for IVF?
有三十多家中心会超过五千个周期，其他的生殖中心都在两千到三千左右。所以我个人的认为，这目前这四百多家。应该是可以满足目前中国 IVF 病人的需求量的。In 2001, the government implemented the management method for assisted reproductive technology. So every IVF center must got the permission for IVF. So the IVF technology is a management is one of the management for the government. Uh, according to the regional planning. The how many how many IVF cycles in the city or how many patients needed the IVF treatment? The government completely master this and control this. So, in my knowledge, up to now, the uh, IVF cycles and the number of IVF centers and the patients needed needed to the IVF treatment is enough. Is enough. There's a potential game changer in China, an increasing number of later life pregnancies. My name is Lia Chunlian. Uh, I'm, for, I'm 14 um, and I'm a doctor. Tell us the story about how and why you ended up going through the IVF process. Um, last year I was pregnant and um, unfortunately uh, I was miscarried. I want to uh, pregnant urgently. You're 40 years old. What made you decide to wait? Uh, because I was married later. <laughs> uh, because um, study, work. It's a common story everywhere, but there's one factor unique to China. The recent end of the nation's one-child policy means 90 million couples are newly eligible to have a second child, and roughly 60% of them are 35 or older, when statistically the chances of falling pregnant naturally decline dramatically. It's no wonder some IVF clinics are reporting a 50% surge in consultations, but some couples are hedging their bets. This is the largest traditional Chinese medicine market in Chongqing, and even couples who are undergoing IVF will come here in search of remedies. From an outsider's perspective, some of what's on sale here seems truly bizarre, but many Chinese couples believe combining Eastern and Western medicine greatly improves their chances of falling pregnant. It's flora and fauna turned medical remedy. In Chinese traditional medicine, dried centipede is thought to be particularly good for men who are suffering fertility problems, but even by Chinese standards, this is not considered appetizing. So here we go. That's not good. But I guess it speaks to just how far some people will go in China to have a baby. Do you think traditional Chinese medicine has a role to play in treating fertility problems in China? Can Western and Eastern medicine be combined to improve the chances of pregnancy? Traditional Chinese medicine is very important in China, even on the world, uh, because traditional Chinese medicine is exclusively uh, features. They can treat many diseases. In the IVF area, traditional Chinese medicine compared with the IVF technology, whether can improve the IVF outcome needed to certify by strong evidence based on medicine. Some believe TCM's 2,000 year history is proof enough. As a foreigner, it's really hard to get my head around the possibility this sort of thing is going to help couples fall pregnant. Mm -hmm. So what sort of things would you recommend for a woman who's suffering from fertility problems? Mm -hmm. 
It smells very pungent. Young thing. This smells a little bit more appetising. I, I heard that, uh, that things like tiger penis are traditionally offered to men to help them with, uh, with fertility problems. Are you offering something like that here? Donkey penis. This man suffers from a rare genetic disorder called Marfan syndrome, which can be fatal. IVF ensured the disorder wasn't passed on to his unborn child. We can't show their faces because of the enduring stigma here surrounding illness and reproductive issues. Your six months pregnant. Can you tell us about the journey that you've undertaken to get to this point? It takes me one year. Um, you know, it's 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 a um, hard it's a hard work. Uh, you have you have to you have to um, do, uh, go to the uh, the, the hospital um, every day. How much did the process cost you? Seventy thousand RMB. Mm. Now you're pregnant, six months pregnant. Yes. Do you feel like it's money well spent? Um, it's um, I, I think I think the price is reasonable. How much revenue does the IVF department generate every year here in Chongqing? We are a hospital. In our here, the price of the is 2004. The price is already no longer expensive. So, we considered these situations. We tried to make the best China has produced an estimated 300,000 babies total through assisted reproductive technology. By comparison, the UK, which produced its first IVF baby a full decade before China, Last year clocked a milestone total of 250,000 IVF births. In China, only married couples can legally undertake the IVF process in the public health system. This is the part of the hospital where the man does his part. Now there's a fingerprint scanning device to make sure the sperm donor is actually the husband. Sesame. This room is where the man is given a little bit of alone time to deposit a very natural ingredient in this jar that's obviously crucial to the IVF process. They've been kind enough to write my name on this jar. Sadly, I'm planning on disappointing them. Once they're done, they leave it here. Press this button. The sperm is manually combined with harvested eggs. By law here, at least one of these elements must be from the husband or wife. In laboratories all across China, science is helping couples create the miracle of new life. We have 这个可能比较通俗，就是说每一个培养的空间里面只放了一个胚胎，就像我们住房子一样，我们每个人住一间房，不会互相受到打扰。On average, about 30% of IVF treatments in China successfully result in a baby being born, compared with about 50% in the U.S. 
But statistical comparisons are difficult because success rates vary according to the age of a would-be mother and national demographics differ. What's certain is that China is making advances and clinics like Chongqing are now averaging about a 50% success rate. We're talking about tens of millions of people in China who potentially uh, suffering fertility problems, but that obviously means there's an economy of scale here. How long is it until China becomes a world leader in terms of research and delivery of IVF technology? Pita 一部分中心已经出现一个临床上已经出现一个临跑领先的一个地位了。The hospital runs a weekly public lecture. It's all about alleviating misconceptions about IVF conception. The cultural imperative to have children in China is strong. Some take advantage of this. There's a darker side to this industry in China. Criminals who are willing to break the law and sell illegally fertilized eggs to couples desperate to have a child. Even here in the men's room of the IVF center in Chongqing, there are advertisements plastered all over the men's room walls advertising these sorts of services, some of them guaranteeing couples can have a boy, some of them saying that they can have guaranteed twins. And there's another growing option for Chinese people, if they can afford it. Hi, Cameron. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you again, Hi, how are you? Hi, great. Good, yeah. good, good. good. Consultancies like this one in Beijing are doing a roaring trade sending Chinese people for IVF treatment in places like the US, where practices like surrogacy are legal. Maybe surrogacy as well, something that they're interested in. Yes, yep. that's Which, true. Uh, perhaps this, uh, in China that's not allowed at the moment? Yes, it's not allowed in here. So, but it's, it's a lot in, in U.S., especially in U.S. So they have the, over 20 years, they have the law for the um, surrogacy. For younger couples, yeah. the success rate is very much comparable with, yeah. say, the U.S. or other yeah. others for markets. Yeah. But, so you're saying effectively that when you get into that older age bracket, yes. That's true. There's a higher success rate in the yeah. US? Yes, that's true. You no, know, the Chinese doctors might disagree with you there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think so we have some discussion with the doctors. In China, it's also very good for most of the doctors. Uh, they have even more experience than most of the US doctors because uh, they need to treat for over 100 patients every day. The number of patients has given rise to a unique cottage industry near IVF clinics accommodation for those undergoing treatment. Our crew went undercover to check out the conditions in these makeshift dormitories.
I noticed that there are people standing outside the hospital and they're, they're giving out cards. What, what are those? Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, our IVF patient, uh, she needed to come to the hospital to give the uh, IVF treatment. Uh, they need to take a long time. Some patients uh, still need uh, to rent some house or room or apartment for staying. I heard that sometimes they, they call them pajama streets because the people there in their hospital uh, gowns yeah. occasionally. IVF is an emotional and financially draining process, while the nation's IVF centres are also increasingly a place where hope and babies are being born. Demand for treatment is likely to keep rising, with so many biological clocks ticking. For China, the race is on.